This is our best look at the iPhone 15 Pro yet. And while it's different from what we saw just a couple of weeks ago, it still kind of looks like an iPhone 14 Pro, doesn't it? 9to5Mac just recently obtained a new, more detailed set of CAD files from a quote, very trusted source. And the first difference that you're gonna notice is with the volume buttons on the side, which by the way, this is easily going to be the most controversial change with the iPhone 15 Pro, aside from USB-C of course. Now, if you look at this, you're going to see that the solid state buttons that we originally thought were coming are not going to be coming. It looks like Apple is going to stick with the traditional volume rocker setup where we have actual mechanical buttons and the volume up and volume down buttons separated, not just on one line. But the big change on the side of the phones this year is going to be with the mute switch because that is going to be a button. And this new CAD file kind of reconfirms that and shows a better look at what that button looks like and you know it could actually be an action button where we can press it and do certain actions like you can on the apple watch ultra now as far as the camera bump goes if you guys remember the original cad files showed that this bump on the back of the phone was going to be massive like a huge jump from the iphone 14 pro but these new cad files these new renders show that it's going to be a bump you know a bump up from the 14 pro but it's not going to be nearly as massive as a camera bump as we saw in the original CAD files, thankfully. These new CAD files also show the same thin bezels, which we heard are going to be, quote, record-breaking in terms of how little real estate they're going to take up on the screen. It's going to be as close to edge-to-edge -to -edge as we've gotten yet on an iPhone. Now, we also see that USB-C port is going to be on the bottom, and we have the more rounded design compared to the 14 series. Now, hold up. I just said USB-C is coming to the iPhone 15, but what if somebody doesn't have Air AirPods and they want to go to the gym and listen to their music, but all they have is their wired ear pods with the lightning adapter. How are they supposed to listen to music then? Well, thankfully, you don't have to buy a dongle because Apple is apparently mass producing USB-C ear pods as we speak. So this comes from leaker Shrimp Apple Pro, who said that Apple is currently mass producing USB-C ear pods along with MFI charging cables. And if you're wondering who would buy wired headphones instead of AirPods, AirPods, it's simple, the cost. EarPods are $20, whereas the AirPods start at $130. That is a big difference. And I don't know if you've noticed, but wired headphones are kind of coming back in at the moment. I see it all the time on TikTok. But do you know what makes the AirPods look cheap? Apple's AR VR headset, of course. And according to these new leaks, the design of this thing is going to be straight up funky and bizarre. According to Mark Gurman, the headset will have an external battery pack that will be worn around the waist. The battery is said to last about two hours where you will then be able to swap out the battery pack for another and German expects these batteries to only cost around $100. The main reason for this design is to keep the headset lightweight and comfortable. And the way this thing charges could be interesting as well because German mentions that the charging cable that goes from the battery pack into the headset has a round tip that inserts magnetically. So I'm assuming this is going to be kind of similar tech to what we see on the MacBooks and the latest iMacs power supply. But the massive billion dollar question still remains. Like, why is somebody going to buy this headset? What is the selling feature? What is the one thing that people are going to need to run out to buy this for? Because we really don't have any idea what that is at this moment. However, we did just get some additional insight as to what apps and features will be running on this headset. We're going to have the ability to run most of Apple's existing iPad apps in mixed reality, including FaceTime, TV, music, and mail. There's going to be a new wellness app with a focus on meditation featuring immersive graphics, calming sounds, and voiceovers. A new portal for watching sports and virtual reality as part of Apple's push into streaming live games and news. A large gaming focus, including top-tier titles from existing third-party developers for Apple's other devices. A feature to use the headset as an external monitor for a connected Mac, and users are also going to be able to operate the headset in several different ways, including by hand and eye control and Siri 
It will also work with a connected keyboard or controls from another Apple device. So I cannot wait to see this headset get unveiled at the Worldwide Developers Conference. Now again, don't expect this to release right away, like it's gonna get announced, but we're probably not gonna see a release until like Q3 or Q4 at the earliest, in my opinion. I think Apple is gonna wanna get it out before Christmas time, but I don't think it's gonna be any time in Q2, in my opinion. I think it's gonna be Q3 or later. Although Taiwan's Economic Daily News is reporting that this headset is now in the final sprint and supply chain delivery stage. Now, while we are on the subject of the Worldwide Developers Conference, let's talk about a potential surprise release at this event because I think it's going to be even more packed than we originally thought. Now, Mark Gurman said on a recent Mac Rumors podcast that he doesn't expect the Apple Silicon Mac Pro to be unveiled at this event, but just a few days ago, we saw three unreleased Mac models appear in Apple's Find My Configuration configuration file. And what's interesting is that these new identifiers are in the same category as desktop Macs. So these are not the MacBook Air models or MacBook Pros that we were already expecting. But with German not expecting the new Mac Pro or Mac Studio yet, what could these Macs be? And I say the possibility of a new iMac is something we could see with these new configuration files or you know these identifiers could just be related to the headset and not be max at all it could just be labeled as a mac but it might actually be like a component or like a model of the ar vr headset maybe it reveals the name so they didn't want to make it public yet so we're probably not going to see the new mac studio or the new mac pro at the worldwide developers conference but we should see those later this year and when we do see that apple is likely to release a new external monitor along with those. However, the best is yet to come. And I say this because Apple is reportedly planning to release 32 inch and 42 inch OLED displays in 2027. This news comes from Omdia, a tech research firm who reports that Apple will transition most of its iPad, MacBook, and external displays to OLED by 2027. They believe that Apple is going to begin using OLED panels for the iPad Pro next year, and then with the OLED MacBook Pro in 2026, along with a foldable 20-inch iPad Pro. And then in 2027, they're expecting Apple to begin using QD OLED or W OLED panels for 32-inch and 42-inch displays. And speaking of Macs, do you guys remember the Bitcoin white paper that was found hidden deep within in the macOS file system, well, that's unfortunately already been removed, as I just recently confirmed in the latest macOS 13.4 beta. Imagine if you were trapped in a canyon 500 feet beneath everybody else, and if you screamed for help, nobody would hear you. Well, that is exactly what happened to three college students, and without the iPhone 14, they likely would have died down there. So this happened in a Utah canyon called The Squeeze, where three BYU students who studied the hike and had experience still ended up getting stuck in a deep pool where one of them went into hypothermic shock. And once that happened, they knew that they were in trouble. And without any cell signal, since they were again 500 feet below the surface, the only possible way for them to get rescued was via satellite. More specifically, via the iPhone 14's emergency SOS via satellite feature. And that, of course, is exactly what one of them used. They were able to get a satellite connection once every 20 minutes to send text messages to rescue officials. And once the rescue teams had their location, they sent a helicopter there to hoist the students out one by one. So let this be another reminder that if you're going on a hike that's dangerous, if you're going to anywhere remote where you might not have cell signal, the iPhone 14 is a must at this point. Like it could literally be life or death. So just keep that in mind and always just remind yourself that you have that feature if you have an iPhone 14 or later as well, because we've seen time and time again how this saves lives. And then finally, as tradition on these Apple Weekly episodes, we have to talk about another crazy AirTag story. And this time it's in regards to state laws, because believe it or not, using an AirTag to track somebody was not technically a crime in some states. But now in Indiana and Ohio, that is likely going to be changing very soon. State lawmakers in Indiana have passed a bill that penalizes individuals who use remote tracking devices like the AirTags to stalk or track people without their consent. 
This would be considered a felony with punishment ranging from two and a half years to six years in prison, depending on the circumstances. That is pretty harsh, especially compared to Ohio, where this new bill would prohibit the installation of air tags on people or their property without their permission. And if convicted, they could face up to six months in jail or a $1,000 fine. And it would only be a first degree misdemeanor instead of a felony offense like in Indiana. So pretty crazy how big of a difference there is in the punishment in those two states. So anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Apple Weekly, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's Apple Weekly episode. And if you missed my iOS Weekly video, which I actually separated the two, you can watch that and I explain why I separated Apple Weekly and iOS Weekly. That video is linked down in the description below. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.